Okay, this is going to be a video about the lung exam, and this has been helpful for my medical students, so it may be helpful for you. So I hope you can see that we're looking at lungs, and these green lines represent the chest wall. So we learned a couple things in our medical school physical exam course, um, like frematis and auscultation and percussion. But I want to back up and help you understand what we're actually testing when we perform these maneuvers. So for one, let's start with primitus. So when we have someone do primitus, uh, we're asking them to say something like boy or some other word that produces a good vibration in the chest. And I want you to go and think about where that sound is coming from. It's coming from the vocal cords up here. Okay, so when they say boy, I want you to imagine sound waves transmitting down the tracheobronchial tree and transmitting out to the chest. Okay? So sound waves are coming from the vocal cords out to the chest. So now you can see I've added a hand here. And so this person is using the ulnar surface of their hand up against the chest wall. And so every time we ask the patient to say, boy, Sound is going to transmit through the tracheobronchial tree out to the chest wall, and we can detect this as tactile frimitus. Okay, that's what that is. So, why do we care about frimitus? Well, here's what it can tell us. Number one, it tells us that sound is making it from the vocal cords out to the chest wall, but we can test for a couple of other things. Okay, notice that I've added a couple of things right here. I've added a pleural effusion. So this is fluid that is outside of the lung. It's accumulated in between the chest wall here and the lung. And so anytime fluid accumulates between the lung and the chest wall, it's going to decrease frematis. And so things that can build up here, pleural effusions, paranemonic effusions, uh, blood, pus, or extracellular fluid. So any of these things can diminish the frematis. And essentially it's because now these sound waves, they're transmitting out to the lung tissue, but this acts like an insulation barrier. It actually cannot make it across the fluid to your hand. So in areas where there's a pleural effusion or any fluid in between the lung and the chest wall, you'll notice decreased tactile frimitus when you ask the patient to say, boy, for instance. Now, let's do frimitus over here. So I'm going to use F to say we're doing frimitus here. We may feel normal tactile frimitus in these areas of the lung down the chest, but right here in this segment of the lung, I've added a pneumonia. So this is an area of consolidation. We're actually inside the lung. The lung is full of pus and fluid and all these alveoli are full of fluid. Okay, so now the tissue actually became more dense. Up here, this is healthy lung. There's a lot of air in it, so it's less dense, but the sound still travels through this part of the lung. What can happen as you remember from physics, is that sound moves faster through fluid, and because the sound is being transmitted down the tracheobronchial tree, it will actually transmit through this tissue, and you will still feel frimitus. In fact, you will feel increased tactile frimitus through an area of consolidation. The sound is actually being propagated through the tissue to the chest wall, whereas on this side, there's something in the way. Fluid, whether it's blood, pus, or anything else, is in the way, and so the sound cannot transmit to the wall. So decrease frematis with the pleural effusion, increase frematis with a consolidation, and you'll feel normal tactile frematis in other healthy areas of the lung. So here we are again, except now I'm using my stethoscope, which is down here. And so when we auscultate the lungs, we're asking patients to take deep breaths in through their mouth. So as they bring air in, they generate turbulence, and so there will be turbulence in the tracheobronchial tree, and this generates the breath sound. And so from somewhere centrally, we're generating sound out here. And so we're hoping that the sound will transmit through tissue, through the chest wall, so we can actually auscultate it. And so when I'm listening up here, I'm checking whether breath sounds move out to the chest. When I check right here, I'm listening for breath sounds. But look, I've added a pleural fusion, just like the last case. And so now there's something in the way. And so if I was listening right here, I can't hear the sound as well. And so this sound cannot cross a pleural fusion. Maybe I hear decreased breath sounds. Sometimes you hear nothing at all if the pleural effusion is thick enough. 
or has a very thick substance to it. Now look on the other side. I've added that pneumonia again. And so remember with the pneumonia, it's actually inside the lung. So this pneumonia is pus and fluid that's impacted and socked into this lobe right here. But as sound passes through the tracheobronchial tree, through the lung itself, it will transmit more efficiently and quickly through a pneumonia. And actually, if I was listening right here with my stethoscope, I'm actually hear increased breath sounds. We actually have a term, we call them bronchial breath sounds because the breath sounds, uh, while listening peripherally, sound just as loud as if we were listening right above the main bronchi. So when there's increased fluid density and increased density in the tissue of the lung, we will hear sound better. And these central sounds will actually propagate out to the chest. It will be louder over pneumonia than if I was listening right here over normal healthy lung. Okay, and real quick, let's talk about percussion. So when you percuss the chest, um, it's kind of interesting. It's sort of like the opposite of what we discussed before. I'm just going to use P and an arrow to designate where we're percussing. So when you hit the chest with your hand, you're actually you're producing sound wave out here, and you're trying to see what's going to get reflected back to you. And so I like to tell uh, students that it's sort of like a poor man's ultrasound. So you're basically asking the question, how dense is the tissue under where I'm percussing? And so under lungs, remember, you know, lung is, it's tissue, but it's mostly air. So it has a nice, deep, resonant type of sound. But something that's denser than air-filled tissue, like this pleural effusion here, if we percuss here, it sounds dull. There's less air, less sound that's propagated, and it doesn't sound as loud, and the note is not as deep. Uh, likewise, if you're percussing over a pneumonia, it would sound dull as well. It sounds duller than the healthy resonant lung if we percussed up top. Um, so just experiment. It's worth, uh, you know, percussing your own, your legs and your abdomen and your lungs just to get a feel for how uh, different tissues make different sounds. Okay, let's do something real quick to consolidate our knowledge. So uh, I've crudely drawn some patients right here and pretend like you're seeing them in the ER and they were both involved in a motor vehicle accident. So uh, this patient in green over here is complaining of severe shortness of breath. So let's say you, you perform fremitus. And so in his uh, right lung here, let's say that fremitus is normal. But what if you perform it all along the left lung and you have decreased fremitus throughout, right? You cannot feel vibrations when you ask the patient to say boy. You then percuss the lung, so you have normal resonance over here. But when you percuss the lung on the left side, you actually hear timpani. So very loud, uh, very loud percussive sound, high, low, low pitch, uh, very loud and reverberant. Um, then you do auscultation, and let's say on the right lung you hear normal, uh, you know, vesicular breath sounds. But uh, what about here? You hear no breath sounds at all. So what does this patient have? So with no breath sounds, I know the sound of uh, from the tracheobronchial tree is not making it out to the chest wall. Uh, sound from the vocal cord is not making out to the chest wall. But when I do percussion, I know that everything underneath is air or it's a very hollow quality. So when I hear timpani, um, he basically has air in the chest. So this is a pneumothorax. And so he could have a tension pneumothorax and you need to treat him urgently. So what about this patient? You do the same type of exam on this patient. Um, what if everything is normal in the left lung, but on the right side of the lung, you notice decreased fremitus, so decreased vibration in the ulnar side of your hand. You percuss, but here you have dullness to percussion, right? So the normal lung is resonant, but over here you have dullness. And then you listen for breath sounds, and you also have decreased breath sounds. So what could be on on here? So it's dull, so I know it's maybe fluid density, or it's really d dense lung tissue. And uh, decreased fremitus, so sounds are not transmitting, breath sounds are not transmitting. So this patient could have a very large pleural effusion. Let's say if he was involved in a car accident earlier today, he may have a hemothorax because a uh, rapid collection of blood 
is a common reason to have a very urgent and quick pleural fusion on one side. Okay, real quick, just to summarize some of those things. So normal lung has normal tactile fremitus. You'll hear vesicular breath sounds, so you'll be able to hear good breath sounds transmitted. And when you percuss on normal lung, it's nice and resonant, makes a nice deep uh, low pitch sound. If there's a pleural effusion, you have decreased fremitus because you can't feel those vibrations. You'll have decreased breath sounds because the breath sounds aren't making it out to the chest wall. And because there's fluid right underneath the chest wall in between the lung and the chest wall, it will be dull to percussion. If there's a pneumonia in one of the lobes right over that area, you'll have actually increased tactile fremitus. You may hear bronchial breath sounds, so sound will transmit uh, faster, more clearly. But because it's fluid density, it'll be dull to percussion in that area. And then a pneumothorax, there will be no tactile fremitus. The lung is actually compressed and shriveled and surrounded by air that's compressing it. Uh, you will not hear breath sounds because there won't be any air moving on that side. And when you percuss on the chest wall, it's full of air, so it makes a really loud sound. We call it timpani. And so this is obviously assuming it's a very large and severe pneumothorax. But um, I know these are broad generalizations, but I think it makes the point. Thank you.